Now, let's welcome Tiana Bowie of Project Search. Welcome, Tiana. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's so good to have you here with us, and I'm so excited to learn about this because I, I, I don't know very much about this, this topic, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really excited to learn from the, the master. Oh, I wouldn't so, say that. <laughs> now, some of our viewers out there may have heard about it already. I have heard about it. Okay. It's called Project, Project Search. Project Search, yes. And um, I know that uh, Novant Health is one of your, is your partner is in this. Partner. Mm -hmm. And... Um, so tell me, just kind of describe to us what Project Search is. Okay, Project Search is an internship program for students with or individuals with developmental disabilities. Mm -hmm. So um, Novant is our employer, mm -hmm. and um, we've partnered with they partnered with Brunswick County Schools Vocational Rehabilitation, mm -hmm. um, Brunswick Community College, mm -hmm. and we all have come together to support. Um, kids with developmental disabilities at their internship within the hospital. Uh, the hospital has about six different rotations. Mm -hmm. Each student will have three. Um, they are placed within the surgical department, the lab, guest services, environmental services, the kitchen, and uh, the, is that six? I, I don't Am know. I Are they, they work in the supply area? And supply, in the supply yeah. chain. In the supply, mm -hmm. supply chain, yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought so. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell me about your role with Project Search. What do you do? Okay, I'm the instructor for the program. Uh -huh. And I'm employed by Brunswick County Schools. Oh, okay. And my role is to teach the Project Search curriculum mm -hmm. and also offer support to the managers and the mentors within the different rotations to teach them about the disability and give them tools to support the kids while they're doing their jobs. I also work with two job trainers from BCC, mm -hmm. Michelle Dunlap and Lynn Smith, and they actually go with the students to provide services to them while they're doing their jobs. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, whose idea was this? Where, how did this all come about? Well, Wes Judah is the mastermind behind all of this. He's on the advisory board um, at BCC for uh -huh. the uh, Brunswick Interagency Program. Oh, yes. I know about that. Okay. And so he was out looking for uh, internships and jobs for you know, individuals with developmental disabilities. Yeah. And he happened to be at a meeting in Raleigh, and he heard about Project Search. Oh. So he pitched it to Brunswick Community College, and they gave him the okay, and he found the partners, Brunswick County Schools, vocation, Vocational Rehabilitation, and the employer, Novant. And it took about a little over a year, and now we're here. I remember when they first started talking about it at the hospital, and I, I heard so much about Project Search, but I, I didn't really understand mm -hmm. and, and grasp the, the, it's a huge thing. It I is. mean, this is amazing. It's, it I is. just can't, I can't believe this. So were your students able to start this past fall, though, even with COVID? We started. All of our interns are in the hospital. I, when you say they're in the hospital, <laughs> they're not sick. They're, they're not just sick. Working. They're working. <laughs> Well, tell me, um, tell me a little bit about the program, how, how it's working, and what the students are actually doing. Okay, so uh, our intern that is in the lab, mm -hmm. she's doing every job that goes on in the lab that she can do that uh, in terms of receiving blood and mm -hmm. getting it ready for whatever they do. Um, she's also learning how to uh, prepare organs that have come out of surgery. Oh to, my goodness. <laughs> to preserve them to go to pathology. Wow. Um, she's labeling and isolating COVID tests and every, she's, whatever they do in the lab, she's doing. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> and so I, we have another intern who's in surgical, uh -huh. who is already at the point where she's preparing the surgical equipment kits oh, for uh -huh. surgery. She does the sterilization and uh -huh. then she's, she's learning to wrap everything that the doctors need. And we have our environmental services, who she's go. She's from the emergency room, mm -hmm. um, all levels of the hospital, you know, preparing rooms, right. discharges. Mm -hmm. um, we have our student that's in the kitchen. He's prepping. He's prepping food, cooking, um, stocking. Uh, we have uh, our kid, that's our intern that's in the supply chain. He's doing the mail, making deliveries yeah. on all the floors, yeah. um, working hard, and... Uh, and our guest services, I call her the queen of Novant. She's the first face that you see when you come in. 
and she's already greeting um, patients, taking temperatures, you know, preparing the wheelchairs, transporting patients. Nice. So they yeah. are fully engulfed in the hospital experience. <laughs> and I bet they're loving it. They love it. I bet. They are. They probably get up in the morning and say, I can't wait to they go. Can't, they are. <laughs> they haven't missed days. <laughs> we have very good attendance. Oh, I bet. Very good attendance. And they're free. Like in high school, you know, they're confined to the yeah. classroom and spaces. But here they are just like any other employee at the hospital. Yeah. Well, um, how old are these students? 17, 18, and 19. 17, they're, they're seniors. They're seniors in mm -hmm, high school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how many students do you have? Six. Six. Mm -hmm. Is that like, is it capped at six or could you have more? We can have more, but the team decided that this year they wanted to do eight. We had seven, but because of COVID, one parent decided that, yeah, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't appropriate. So now we have six, but next year we hope to have eight. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, are they taking any special precautions uh, with COVID or is it pretty much what we all have to do at the hospital or yeah, in well, our We all practices? have to do at the hospital, whatever the, yeah. the safety procedures for the hospital, you know, we're yeah. wearing masks all day, social distancing. Also, each department has their own uh, resources and PPE. And so our kids abide by those, um, yeah. those safety precautions. Yeah. So do you have a primary goal for this program for these students? What is your goal? Our goal is for them to sustain employment, to become independent, yeah. productive citizens. I'm, I'm just amazed at this. <laughs> I'm so excited about this. What are the parents saying? How are they? Um, they were afraid. Were they? Appreh they? Apprehensive, not really understanding what their children will be doing, but they are a great support to us. They're always available. We communicate weekly. Mm -hmm. um, they want to know how they're doing. And so I make sure that I, I contact them and let them know the progress of the students. Oh. And if the kids are happy, the parents, parents are happy. have to be so happy to see them happy. Yeah. You know? they, are, they, they are. They are great. Um, if there's someone watching mm -hmm. and they've got a son or a daughter that they might, um, they think might be uh, a candidate for this in the future, mm -hmm. what can they do about it? Um, Yolanda Warren is our contact at North Brunswick High School. What's her name again? Yolanda Warren. Uh -huh. And she can be reached at ywarren at bcswan.net. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I just, I still can't get over this program. It is so wonderful. It I'm is. Just, you look like you enjoy it very I do. much. And I bet you get so much gratification from this um, I do. That's, and satisfaction from this. That's one of the reasons why I applied. I'm, I'm an occupational um, course of study teacher, exceptional children's teacher. I've been doing this for about eight years here in this area. Uh -huh. And you know how you just reach a point where you feel like you need to be doing a little more? Uh -huh. And when I saw the video about Project Church and saw the, the hospital in Cincinnati where it started, I said, you know what, that's something that I want to be a part of. I want to yeah. take the kids to the next step to make sure that they have the skills needed to be successful and independent. So it started in, in Ohio? Cincinnati, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. And is it all over the country? It's now? all over the country and uh, the world, actually. Really? Yes. Yes. And if wow. people want to know more about it, you can go to projectsearch.com. Projectsearch.com. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that Nevant Health Brunswick Medical Center is so uh, honored to be to have this um, I think it's a great program I think it's a great thing to do for these kids and I'm just going to open up all kinds of doors for them yeah. I, I want to have you come back and okay. I would love when we can have maybe a student come with you okay. right now with COVID we're, we're limited to one guest at a time so okay. maybe we can uh, do something a little different or even come and see your classroom I would love that I would love because to we can in. do this um, long distance. We can come yeah. and do the classroom once the COVID-19 uh, pandemic is over. So that would be great. That would be it? great just to come see them in their in their environment. That would be great. Well, it has been a, such a pleasure having you here today. Thank You're you. a delight. Thank you. <laughs> you, you it's going to be so successful just with you leading it. I'm Thank so, you. so Thank proud you. of Novant Health Thank for uh, joining that and the college. And... Um, so thanks again and come back and see us. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. All right. <laughs>
Tell me how that happened. Sure. So I've been a respiratory therapist for going on 17 years. Wow. Uh, it's I can't believe it. It's been that long time. It doesn't seem like that. You don't but look old enough. I, know, <laughs> I travel. I've traveled all around working as a therapist, as a travel therapist, and then oh. um, came to the Brunswick area when my husband and I decided to start having a family. So um, we like the area, and um, I went to school to be a therapist. I got an associate's degree, but as therapists, you can get a bachelor's or master's. But I chose to take a little different route, and I got my bachelor's bachelor's and master's in business so oh nice well, that really broadens your yeah yeah well tell me about your role at Novant Health what do you what does that look like so my role at Novant Health is I'm the manager of respiratory care uh -huh. cardiovascular diagnostics and cardiac rehab so I manage the day-to-day -day operations so that my team can give the remarkable care that Novant's known for nice Nice. Well, um, why did you become interested in being a respiratory therapist? It's quite funny. So back home where I'm from, I used to run EMS, which is emergency management. Yeah. And our chief there was a respiratory therapist. He actually taught at oh. our school and he recommended it to me. He said, I really think you'd be a great therapist. You have a you know, sense for detail. It's kind of your path. You know, I think that's your, that would be what you like. So why don't you apply? And I did. And I got into the program and the rest they say is history and I couldn't imagine being anything else. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. oh. um, well, this has really been a, an interesting year, especially for a respiratory therapist and um, with the pandemic and all. So tell me uh, what your team's experience has been like this year with the coronavirus. Well, you know, Jean, there's two words I can use to sum it up and that <laughs> would be roller coaster and whirlwind. <laughs> And our patients that come in with the COVID-19 virus, like none of them are alike. And so that seems to oh. be the, you know, up and down battle that we fight. Mm -hmm. Some are extremely critical and need help with oxygenation issues, not enough oxygen in their body. And some just need a little bit of help. And we're there mm -hmm. at the bedside along with our nurses and providers. It's a team effort, but we're there to help them through that crisis in mm -hmm. whatever manner we need to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've heard a lot about ventilators this mm -hmm. year. I think everybody's familiar with a ventilator now and, and what those do. Um, so the respiratory therapists are very involved in the care of um, the coronavirus patients at the bedside, right? Absolutely. So for the most part, it's the more critically ill patients, those okay. patients that I spoke of that are having those oxygen issues. We need to help them to breathe. But then there are some patients that just need a little bit of supplemental oxygen to help get them through their crisis. Mm -hmm. And um, that's where the more critical patients, what you're talking about, the mechanical ventilator, that's yeah. where we kind of come into play with them. Mm -hmm. But again, it may just be a, some, something as simple as a nasal cannula and we're right there to help them. Mm -hmm. Well, we recently had on um, Dr. Daniel Feinstein, um, who is the director of the um, tele-ICU uh, program. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm assuming that you work in conjunction uh, with the tele-ICU folks. So talk to me a little bit about um, that capability now that Novant Health has that capability. How does that involve you? Yeah, it's a wonderful um, new capability that we have at our facility. As you said, um, we, have we have an intensivist group, which mm -hmm. consists of the intensivist doctor and the nurse. That's just another set of eyes on our patient, mm -hmm. that we have a collaborative approach to take care of the more critical aspects of the patient. Sepsis, our COVID-19 patients, like we spoke of, they've been instrumental in helping us get those patients over that hump and getting them mm -hmm. better. Um, it's just been a very welcoming and wonderful program that we as therapists have been able to talk with the intensivist, talk about how to change the patient's ventilator if necessary, uh, work with the nurses. It's just been a wonderful collaborative approach for them. Mm -hmm. When we talked with Dr. Feinstein, uh, he talked about how uh, the intensivist checks in on the patient, the uh, nurses check in on the patients virtually, mm -hmm. and then you also have the ability to talk with those providers and the family does too is that correct absolutely and i think that's one of the reasons why it's been so well received from mm -hmm. our patients is because they've actually been able to participate in that plan of care if they're able to the family's able to speak with the intensivist and the nurse as well we're able to talk with them they see that interaction and they see that we're really trying to take the best care of their loved one here as close to home as possible mm -hmm. So you, you would agree that it's a huge benefit for the, the patients and their families with this new tele-ICU. 
And that's just available in the ICU, is that correct? Correct, yes, in the room. We round with the tele-doctors every day and the tele-nurses, and it's right there in the intensive care unit that we have. Mm -hmm. And where are they located, the doctors and the nurses, the tele-folks, uh, where are they located? So they're located at the um, central hub, the SOC is what we call it. Um, and they're all there sh in the Charlotte area, I believe. Mm -hmm. And now the doctors can be anywhere. Right. Dr. Feinstein, when he he's done, you know, if he goes away, if he, he goes can away, do it he remotely. can exactly. So it's a very great, uh, wonderful tool for them to be able to really be anywhere in the world and check in on their patients. That's amazing. I, mean, I never thought I'd see the, the day that mm -hmm. that would be the case. And sometimes families and even patients. Um, they're sort of nervous about the, the tele stuff. But I think our practices also have seen a huge um, uh, improvement in people who want to do a virtual visit, um, mm -hmm. just can't leave the home, they don't have a ride, you know, the transportation's an issue. So it works with many other, um, many other things too. Absolutely. Not just in the hospital, mm -hmm. so. I think the one positive thing that came out, not one, but one of the positive things out of the virus is that it's kind of paved the way for this yeah. technology. And it's been well received because nobody really wants to go out. And they now understand the importance of the technology and being able to do it remotely. Mm -hmm. um, well, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you would like to add? Um, I think the one thing I'd like to remind our viewers, um, if they are at all sick or not feeling well, mm -hmm. and they feel like they need to come into the emergency room, to please do that. Uh, we have many safety measures in place to keep people from getting any type of virus, but we don't want to delay the care that they may need. We're seeing sicker and sicker patients because right. they're waiting so long to come into the facility. And so we just don't want them to delay that because they're in fear of the virus. We have right. those safety measures in place for, to take care of to great to take remarkable care of them. Well, thank you so much for being here today. It's been a pleasure. Um, we've learned a lot from you and I look forward to having you back. Absolutely, thank you so much. You're welcome.